enemy got some of us twisted. And I thank God for the, I thank God for what Janielle did. Uh, May, y'all can sit down. I'm just, just want you to know you ain't broke down and powerless when you walked in here today. Just, just want you to know. Just want you to know, we're going to just be here because we're going to go straight into uh, Sunday school. We're going to keep things on order because the man of God is, is gone. And I thank God that he can get away. And the house of God is still going, uh, no matter who's here, we're still going to do it as if Bishop was here. Things got to continue to flow because it's not about Bishop. I love him. That's my dad. I love him. But God, I owe you. I owe you because if you take him from us, he is just a gift. He's just on loan, guys. He really is. He's just on loan. And if God said, hey, it's time for him to go somewhere else, it's time for me to do something else, it's time for me to take him to a greater level, then you can't say you ain't learned what you learned. I know the things, the principles that I learned here at Grace Apostolic. I know I heard a word. I got a daily bread. I know I learned how to pray and be powerful and not just to pray. So if you, are you stagnant and you still where you were when you came in 20 years ago, shame on you because there's no reason. There's no reason for that. And all you doing is saying, yeah, 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 the demon that's assigned to you, all you're doing is just giving him motivation. He got promoted because he got you so broke down. He got promoted because he got you believing in lack and, and poverty and despair. You're just so convinced, and you're thinking you're fighting people. You're so convinced that, no, trying to get people to understand, trying to get people to, to see it your way, and all you're doing is just, just letting that enemy know, yep, that's what I want you to do. Yep, yep, yep. Discord. That enemy of discord, he got promoted. He got promoted. Mm-hmm. You got to know that. You got to know that. And it's one thing to say it, Myla, and you're right. He is a lot. But it's one thing you got to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on here? Mm-mm. Somebody's getting promoted because of my finances. After Sister Barlow taught that, you mean Shy Shy is going to pie past me? Now, Shy Shy is getting promoted because if she takes heart to what Sister Barlow is doing, she is going to be a millionaire. We saying it, but you ain't got envelope the first. You ain't got savings the first. Everything, every financial class that's been taught, every financial principle, you ain't done it because in your mind it's so bogged down where you don't understand. Well, I don't have this and I don't have that. My money is this and my money. I don't care if you have one dollar today. You get tied off of that, say 15% of that. I don't care what it is. It's the principle that you're missing. It's the, it's the principle. So when people, and that is designed by the enemy. Part of it is not just you. The enemy is designed to make you believe that, Myla. You have to know what you're going up against. I don't want you to think, well, why do I? Some, some of us need to take into account why do we think the way we think. I know I have not always been thinking right. And I finally got to the point where you just get sick of yourself. You just get sick of yourself like, what's that? Now, this is just getting on my own nerves. It's just getting on my own nerves. Why do I keep feeling that way? Why is this bothering me? Why it, what's going on? Enemy just sitting over you. Just doing everything he can to distract you. You are attracted to distraction. I told my son that. He said, you got too much you need to get done. You attracted to distraction. Procrastination just runs your life. Anything you can do to, to, to keep from just buckling down and just going for it. Anything. You'll find anything. Stuff you're not even interested in. You know, everybody's business. But if somebody asks you your five giftings, you have to take, we have to take the rest of the class for you to figure out. Come up with five giftings. Five things that you know you're good at. Five things that you're working on. You can recite your 90-day plan if you had to. Because you're attracted to things that are distracting you because that's too big. And I want you to know, if you don't hear nothing else, I want you to know the enemy designed for that. You are fighting up against, a, he is not a punk devil. He has put in a lot of work to, to, to wear you down, Nikita. He put in a lot of work to discourage the youngs. He really don't like Cager. He really don't like what Cager represents. He really, really don't. And you have to understand, but there's people here, there's people here that have, that have surpass a lot of things. And I'm not talking about just in, just in age. I mean, we know what May Lee is to the kingdom. I, I do. At least I do. Maybe a lot of people don't know her like I know. But I know some of the things. I thank God. But as great as May Lee is, I know just a little bit of what jaquela has been through. But I know what Trey is going to have to overcome. 
And that's three different women on three different levels. But each and every one of them, the enemy said, I can't let Trey get to Jaquela's level, and I sure enough can't let Jaquela get to Maylee's level. That's what the beauty of the fast was. What just Danielle did, and, and I guess Lisa Omar set it up, just it was in her spirit to have prayer, and Danielle said, well, let's fast. I'm like, okay, well, shoot, I could pray. I could pray all day. I want to meet and pray, but you didn't threw the fast in there. Okay. Let me get with my sisters because sometimes they don't even have to know what you're going through. I thank God for some praying sisters. They don't even have to know what you're going through. But if you just get amongst them, you'll be like, okay, everything going to be all right. Every, I, I ain't told nobody nothing, but somebody done picked up on something. Everything going to be all right. Okay, let me join in with that. First of all, because there's a demon that says, you know what, the women of grace is going to always have discord. The women of grace are going to always have confusion and conflict. That's just his job. I mean, he here today. He just said, you know what, let, Good morning. Good morning, women of grace. Who, 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 who can I use today? Oh, that's just his job. Don't be, I mean, that's his job. You got to know that. And when you're aware of that, you be like, oh, uh-uh. No. No. Fired. You fired. No, not today. Not me. Not me. Not me. And that's my thing. Not me. Mm-mm. Because I know I benefited from everyone in here. So when, those, when you get in the midst of those women and they pray and they intercede for you, there's power. There's power. If I'm on, power, I'm on fire and I got the power and Betty is, and we, man, psh, that thing flows. And for every husband who wife participated, and I know some couldn't be here for the corporate prayer. Some people, you know, had other things that couldn't fast. But just take advantage of any time people come together. And I, I hope to God. I hope to God the men do the same just because of the beat down that men take. And, and it's hard. I mean, women, we, we messy, but when it comes together, when it comes to getting something together and doing it, we, 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 put, we get it done. We really do get it done. I thank God for that. But I hope the men can say, you know what, KT, uh-uh. No, nope. I'm not going to let you be beat down. Uh-uh, Cager. Cager, the devil hates a lie, Kim Production. You can't do nothing without getting a response. You can't even think about a play, and the enemy's like, oh, no, I meant to destroy that. What are you doing? No. You got to fight that. Nate, you have to know the things that you've already defeated. You have to remind yourself. That's enough praise right there. Right there, just reminding yourself of what you know, what you ain't told nobody. What you ain't told nobody. You can't tell me. Marcus didn't upset hell. I mean, Mark is just like, every time the enemy thing, that demon that's assigned to Marcus Crawford is like, I told you, I got him. And here he will use Maylee to bless him. Say, he's like, what the heck is going on? He's supposed to always be without a car. What, what is going on? And, he, and then he just gets something that, he don't get something ragged. He gets something where he look good in it just to let the devil know, yeah, you know. You just got to lean back in it and be like, uh-huh, I'm right. I'm right. Just walking in it. I was like, man, that boy looked good in that. It's like, you should always have that. that. That looked like something you should just be like, hey, I look so good in this. Let me give this to somebody else. Let me give something else to somebody else because I look so good. I enjoyed it so much. That's something I need to pass on. But that's because, whoo, that's the beauty. I got some scriptures. I promise I do. That's the beauty of what may lead. That's what I was talking about. Trey getting to Jaquela, Jaquela getting to May Lee. Y'all don't know. It's just the little bit, little bitty things that I know of. So May Lee gets to bless her kids based on a relationship with Mike Falco that and Mike's been gone for a long time. And I think I just got here when I maybe saw him. And I thought, man, I can't get a tussie roll out of my ex-in-laws. And here he's been gone and she's still getting blessed. Abel, I mean, it's, she blessed so much that she can just pour it down. I mean, just overflowing. Well, who, who can I? Let me bless my kids. I don't think Mike even know about Marcus. He don't know about Marcus. So Marcus is benefiting from what somebody else set up. Why can't we set stuff up? I want Davion to be that when Davion's gone or when Kenny's gone, Trey's kids will know that my daddy set this up for us. They don't understand it. They don't understand why they live in the Linden Estates. They just was born there. They don't know nothing about 4114 Benny Street. We just grew in Linden Estates. They don't understand. 
when they come here and they go into children's church and your kids is talking about the shooting, they're like, what? Oh, what? we saw that on Taken 2 or something. What are you talking about? What shooting? Because those kids are not surrounded by that. It's a mindset. It's something. But Kenny got to have that vision to say, you know what? I have to set this up. Man, I wish, I wish your parents could be here to teach that how to set that stuff up so that even when he's gone, and that's the thing it has to be, you have to set stuff up that when you're gone, that your kids are still benefiting from the word that you heard, the principles that you learned from finally getting it, Myla, from finally saying, you know what, this is how I'm supposed to live. Get Ephesians 3.20 real quick. Just We won't be here long. I, I got a timer. I'm going to be in order. We're going to go straight into Sunday school. Sis Mo gonna bring a word. We're gonna do it just like Bishop here. We, he, he, y'all can see he is not playing about being on time. So you start at eight o'clock. I don't care if nobody here. And that's what we're gonna do. That's what will happen. Uh, Ephesians 3:20. Trey and those, and I, and, I, and I got some babies here, and I'm gonna talk about it in Sunday school, but I got some babies here. Where's Taylor? Is Taylor here? Taylor Roundtree here? Mary Mary here? Okay, get her when she get here. But I got some babies here that are sitting here. And not understanding what's going on. And, and Michelle, Davion is sick, but if he feel better, I'm going to go get him. Um, oh, Keith is here to drum. But he was, <laughs> I'm so hard. I'm like, you don't get sick days in my home. <laughs> you got to drum. Now, if they need you to drum, get up, cough. And then no, I'm just playing. So <laughs> I was like, if your Uncle Keith ain't there to replace you to drum, then you're going to get up. And he's like, dang, I got a sore throat. Okay, I can't, you don't get sick days. I want him to get used to not taking sick days. <laughs> Unless your head is off. <laughs> <laughs> and you got one leg, and even then, you got one hand that you can type, do whatever you can do. Show up from work and let them say, oh, just go ahead and go home. You show up, let them send you home. I want my boy, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little harder than some of y'all, I understand. But I have a problem with men with a sore throat calling in to work. Negro, get your butt in there. <laughs> get a surgical mask and get, make some money. <laughs> That's just me in my home. I'm just saying. So Davion is like, Lord, please let a word come forth that my mom, I, he needs to know that he got that for a long time. <laughs> he, he got to do that for a long time. But my point being, he has to understand. He, he mentioned something. He has some questions. And my kids always want to extend Sunday school. I'm like, you should ask that question when we was in Sunday school. But they always want to come over and just lay out. And But, Mom, I don't understand this. And I never knew that. So I'm like, okay, our kids really are not clueless. They're clueless. Jaquayla, they really don't get an understanding of what we took for granted. What we know, just the basics of who Jesus is. Where did he come from? But so, Davey, I mentioned... Um, we read that scripture, Genesis 1:27, and I guess Genesis 1:26 came up in Sunday school. Well, when God said, "Let us," and it was like, "Well, who was God talking to?" So Davion said, "Mom, we talked about that in Sunday school." I said, "You mean Michelle and Marcus class?" He's like, "Yeah, Mom. We've been going through our Pentecostal book, and he talking about the Godhead." And I said, "Man, I thank God for the foundation of Sunday school." What if Michelle was so beat down? With, with Tim tripping with her, and I'm sure they have issues, and her kids, and that she couldn't pour into. My son is reciting things he learned. So don't, I don't want you to think that these kids are not listening. What Crystal's teaching, what Star's teaching, now I got to get my grandbabies in there. But what Star's teaching, even in Sunday school, if you just don't come to Sunday school for whatever reason, you're missing out. Because it's a foundation. That's where, especially if you're in my class, ask questions. I want you to know, because you will sit here. Week after week, service after service, and not even understanding. Bishop's going through all this Greek, all this Hebrew, all this phenomenal stuff, and you just don't even know who Jesus is. You can't find five scriptures on Jesus. So Ephesians 3 and 20, that's something that everybody should know. That's just something that's, that I just recite. And even when I hear somebody say Ephesians 3 20, I'm like, now nah, unto him. I was like, okay. But so I want you to, even adults, even adults, because sometimes you didn't have a church background, and sometimes you did. I mean, I, I came from non-denominational to Baptist and didn't understand nothing about the apostolic faith. Had no clue what it was. So if you don't know when, the, when scriptures come up, make sure you take them down and you go back and study them. <clears throat> and I say it all the time. Some will do it, some won't. But you're going to get left behind without a word. You really, you, you really going to know. We're talking about prayer. 
and we're talking about the, the purpose of prayer and the power that comes with prayer, and you have to speak a word. The enemy, and I started the class out by explaining it to you guys, the enemy has an assignment. He's running out of time. He's stepping it up. You got to know that. Had a good day today. Maybe you woke up, felt good, had a little cup of coffee, had a little extra time. You still benefited from the extra hour. You good. Trust me. He's sitting here. How am I going to get him? How am I going to distract him? You got to know. You got to know if you're an attraction to a distraction. You got to know that. Everything that's going on, I got stuff going on. You got stuff going on. When you come into the house of God, it's like I'm let, uh, when you walk down that aisle, I'm leaving it all. I'm leaving it to the side. I'm getting a word. I need a daily bread. So Ephesians 3.20, write it down. May Lee read that. There's some power that's working in you. It's the point of that scripture that I want to make. Something else, but there's some power that worketh in you. So everybody right now is thinking something. You could be thinking about what you got to do today. You could be thinking about, I didn't get my Sunday school homework done, and I know she's going to ask for it. Everybody is thinking about something. There is a power that's working in you that can do that. And if you ask in God, that's the power of prayer. Prayer is an invitation for you to say, hey, what do you need? My kids come to me all the time. Mama, I need. Everybody got kids. Mama, I need. Mama, I want. Mama, I would like. Mama, can you do? Mama, remember you said. Mama, 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 mama. I am so limited. (laughs) And there's some things that I do outside of trying to be God, outside of what I have, get myself in trouble. But God don't work like that. There is no limit to God. That's an invitation for you to say, hey, I I need some things. My mind ain't been right. Because how is he going to do exceeding abundantly above whatsoever you think if you ain't thinking right? You need to expand your thinking so he can do above that. It was just a thought that we need to have a fast and come together for corporate prayer. It was just a thought. And I mean, I got blessed from that. I got blessed so much from that. I got blessed, first of all, by listening to Danielle pray. I was like, girl, if you don't shut your mouth, this girl, she has some word. Some people pray, they be the, oh, Jesus in them. And thank you, Jesus. And, and thank you, Jesus. Be like, okay, okay. We're going to keep thanking them. No, we need to grow. We need to mature. And we was talking, I was talking about that to Karen. When you don't mature, when you don't grow, when you get a certain age and you still at a certain level of infancy, that's, you know, retardation. And some of us spiritually are retarded. You need to grow. You need to grow. I've been sitting here for eight months. I've been sitting here for five years. I've been sitting here for 20 years. What do I know? What do I understand? What am I able to articulate and to teach somebody else? Everybody in here has a testimony that they could teach. What's the scripture to go behind your testimony? What caused you to overcome that thing? Why don't you screw? What, what word do you stand on? What is it? Why don't people recognize, recognize the old me? Why have I changed? Why have I allowed that? Not just because I sat in here, but at some point I start believing it. At some point it clicked. At some point I said, you know what? If I keep open my, it's easy to get a fool between your legs. It's hard to get them out your life. I'm tired of fools. I've met my quota. I'm tired of that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to introduce my boys to that. I don't want my boys to be the fools that I let in between my legs. I would die if my boys mistreat anybody the way I've been with treat. I will kill Kenny and, and do like my grandma would say, I'll kill you until God you die. I will kill Kenny. <laughs> That's my old school. My girl, I'll, I'll kill you myself until God you die. I'll kill him if he mistreated Trey. Are you kidding me? I, much as she liked to eat, let her go without a loaf of bread. What do you mean you ain't got no bread? I be trying to be respectful, Crystal and KT, to what y'all doing, but I be like, hey, they late. I just want one time. Y'all sitting there like, they ain't paid their rent. Kenny, what are you doing? Because if I didn't pay rent, you would be homeless, and you ain't never been homeless. Even through divorces, even through breakdown, when I lost jobs, had to get another job, you ain't never Mr. Mill. Y'all stand up. I want y'all to know he ain't Mr. Mill. Stand up, Kenny. He ain't Mr. Mill. He's still benefiting from a gallon of milk. (laughs) He ain't Mr. Mill. (laughs) Okay, sit down. You're looking hungry. Sit on down. (laughs) 
He ain't missed a meal. That's because of the God that I believed in that I had to get. It had to take form. It had to take. Shy Shy looking good today. You had to at some point believe in God or Shy Shy would come in here looking raggedy. We've seen some people come in here looking raggedy. You'd be like, man, just let it take, baby. Just let it take. Just let it take. If you hold on, I promise you're going to turn. You're going to make that turn. Hold on. If you stay in here. It sounds like we all churchy. It sounds like we all just feel with the Holy Ghost speaking in the tongue. But, baby, that thing goes going to bless you. You're going to need that, God. You're going to need to walk the floor. You're going to need to get radical. You're just going to need to go there. That thing, when, that, when you turn that corner and that thing taken, it finally becomes a part of you. You'll be like, why did I waste time? Why did I cry over that? I should have left you a long time ago. Why did I wait so long to leave? Why did I allow for you to take knowledge of me that I can never get back? I'm just now figuring out, man, I really love to read. I love to read. I wasn't reading when I was screwing. No, that was knowledge. Mary, you probably need some knowledge to restore. You probably find out that you love to read. I'm just messing with Mary. She hate to read. <laughs> but there were some things that I like to do. I'm mad that I'm just now doing international travel. I mean, I, I thought it was a big deal when I started going on my cruises. But going across the sea, what if... What, what was I doing all that time? What was I doing all that time? Just that, that demon that was promoted, that was assigned, that demon got so many promotions off of my mind, just my mind. That he didn't even have to touch my checking account. You, you know what, Satan? You ain't got to touch it. I, I, I'm going to do what you want me to do with it because of my mind. I'm going to mess up my own money. I'm going to mess up my own kids because of my mind. I'm going to mess up my own dominion. What does that mean? I don't have to take dominion. You ain't got to beat me down over taking dominion. I'm going to do it for you because my mind is messed up. Because I don't take, the, take part in the invitation to get before God and say, God, there's power when I call in your name. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in just saying Jesus and knowing what that means. But if you don't understand, Darnell, if you don't have an understanding of who he is, you'll just say that like you calling on Jesus. Jesus Jesus. No, there's a difference. It's spelled the same, but there's a difference. I guarantee you it's a difference. It's about what it means to you. Baby, I hadn't been through some things that Jesus can't help me with. Because if my mind went right, I'd be the screwed Jesus. But I know when I call on the name of Jesus, <laughs> Come, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. I'm just, I, hey, I'm just being real. I'm going to sit down in a minute. Y'all go to your Sunday school class. But I know me. I know how jacked up I was. I know I had to get that thing right. Wait, there's a difference. There's a difference. I know I had this power. When I understand what Ephesians 3.20 means, you mean to tell me whatsoever I'm thinking you able to? He said, yep, I sure can. And you know what? The power that I'm going to do it is working in Tony right now. It's working in you. What are you doing being powerless? It's working in you. Could have been had that business. Could have been had that home. Could have been had some things. I could have been traveling a long time ago. What am I doing? Living like God ain't God. What am I doing, Jaquela? Why? Because I ain't made that turn. I really don't believe it. I come here because there's really not too much to do on Sunday morning. So I come here. I sit here. I appreciate Bishop. I want to see what Lisa got on because I know she's going to be fly. But you know what? I really ain't made that turn. I really ain't tapped into the power that worketh within me. I can think that thing, and then I can ask it. When you're speaking into the atmosphere, it's there. You got to catch up with, I'm a millionaire. How many times, how many services you just stood here and said that? You better catch up. You just spoke it. It's in the atmosphere. You better catch up with it. Where is it at? If I'm going this way, uh-uh, my millions is over there. Let me switch. Let me hear a word. Let me be in prayer. And maybe it'll take fasting. I mean, that was awesome. Now, you know, I can't, can't do that every week. But, um, but that pray, prayer to me, now to, maybe to y'all, y'all just pray and, and, and be on Facebook and, and be talking to people, but I shut it down because I'm like, God, first of all, it ain't every day I fast. And it's always on the day they want to have a goodie day at work. So you just really going to test me. So when I'm fasting, it's like, wait a minute, I am putting Linda in check. Uh, that little hard-headed side of Linda, that little, you don't tell me I have the means to get what I want to get. No, not today. It's all about you, God. I'm, I, it's a sacrifice because your body naturally needs food. So I'm putting it all aside and saying, God, I need to hear from you. That's just a primer for prayer. So then when I come before him in prayer, it's like, okay. Got your attention now. You ain't got the energy to get smart. 
You got the energy to get evil. I mean, it, it'll make you want to be evil. I'll be like, well, what are you doing? You ain't got the energy to cuss. Now, if you do on a fast day, I mean, you a bad member jammer, you something else. You, you, you add a couple of more days of fasting. There's some things, and there's some times you might have to double up on that fast. It's some stuff in me, one fast and get out. I cut it off at three, ate too quick. <laughs> should, should have went a little bit longer. Oh, you need to do that again. There's some th- I'm not talking about for you guys. I'm talking about for Linda. I'm talking about, wait a minute. If you ain't told Mary, and you and Mary, me and Mary real close, but if I ain't told Mary nothing, you know that's in you. You know that's your issue. You know that's what's keeping you stagnant. You don't want everybody to know about it, but that's what's keeping you stagnant, Kelly Joe. That's the thing that the enemy is saying. Quit tripping. You know you ain't going to get over that. Quit tripping. And he will justify it. Oh, man, we justify a lot of stuff. We justify some stuff. Oh, we good. We put a lot of energy in. Well, you don't understand what happened to me. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, you don't know what it's like to be me. And God's like, what are you talking about? What are you, for real? And you might convince people, but God's like, "Mm mm-mm. No, sir. Are you kidding me? Are you, do you want me to remind you of what I've already done? Do you want me to remind, do you want to go back? So you can't be delivered. You can't have this new Holy Ghost filled body and still justifying stuff of the past. I, you don't understand what it's like to be single. So I could just hook up with anybody, but wait a minute. Either the Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost, it's holy or it's not. You decide. You decide. Either there's power that worketh within you or not. You can't have it both ways. So either you're going to walk in it, activate it, and say, this is what God has for me. And God, there's some stuff in me still. That's just a reminder that you ain't all the way there. <laughs> so that's what went. So when these young ladies come up in here that Quayla was praying off, and every single one of them had a baby on their hip, I said, come on, Linda, there you go. I remember walking in the Grace Apostolic with a one-year-old and a two-year-old. I remember virtuous woman class didn't take the first Thursday. Took a couple of Thursdays. I remember big thinkers on Saturday. I remember Valida sisterhood. I remember sitting at Elaine Schauswaller's foot. I mean, I mean Elaine Wesley's feet. I remember she was the first one to say, "Baby, you can come. You ain't got to sit in your chair cry. You can come to the altar." And I just went because everybody else was going. But we have people that don't even know what it means when you come here. You come here distracted because you attracted the distraction. So you come here and you hear Tamika speaking in tongues and you're thinking, okay, when I come to the altar, I'm supposed to be speaking in tongues. Mm-mm. You hear Janae pray, okay, well maybe I should pray. Maybe if I pray loud, that activates more power. Mm-mm. Well, I see somebody else going to lay hands on somebody, so maybe if I do that, and, and Bishop like, yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. Or maybe if I do that, then Bishop be like, yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So you'll spend your lifetime in church mimicking what other people do and not understand appointments and mandates and timing. God called you to do that at this time. You sit down. God called you to do this at this time, not you this time. You don't understand it. And not even understand it. You mimicking. But you won't mimic the prosperity. You won't mimic walking in faith. You won't mimic that. That's too much. Mm-mm, that's too much. I won't mimic the discipline of getting here at 5 o'clock in the morning and coming to prayer. 6 o'clock in the evening, maybe 5 o'clock. Maybe you're not, a, you're not a morning person. I get it. We open the church at 6 o'clock every day. You won't mimic that. You won't mimic that. You won't mimic coming to Sunday school. Y'all some slick ones. Y'all drop your kids off, get them, make sure they signed up for children's church. I'm out. I'm bouncing. Okay? That's cool. That's cool. It ain't for everybody. I understand that. I feel you. You know all the scriptures. Genesis to Revelation. You're good. But you're missing the principle of sitting next to a tray and saying, Trey, let me explain this. You can't tell me. Don't nobody know more is May Lee. I'm telling you, May Lee and Evangelist Mozilla, those are my heroes in this church. One, just two of them. Because I know just a little bit of some of the things that they've been through. And I'm thinking, dang, May Lee is just all around. She is not always super spiritual. You can't have a baby shower, a bridal shower, and have Maylee there. <laughs> uh, it's going it's to turn to the left. <laughs> You'd be like, what? Poor, poor, come on. 
Y'all know Tony Sluter was at Trey's bridal shower like, really? Is this how we do? We crazy. But that's the fun she is. She's just fun. I mean, just fun to be around. And why? Why should she be? She's been through enough heartache and grief to not be that fun. So somebody else that's been through something, you ain't got no reason for sitting around being all super spiritual and holy. Have some fun. You can laugh. May leave crazy. I thank God, but when it comes time, if you need a word, she knows some word. She knows some word. So she ain't all just silly and ain't got no word. I, she has crafted. She has perfected her craft. Let her get up on that keyboard right now and the Holy Ghost because that's an anointing. So I understand my role. I know that I have to have balance. I know that I have to know when to have fun. I know I have to encourage. And she takes part in what other people are doing. She can say, you know what, I'm Ailey. I'm an elder in the house of God. I don't have to do that. No, have something. She'll come there. She'll be there. If she can get there, she participate. I've seen Sis Mo at Lisa's party just dance, and I'm like, come on, Evangelist Mozilla, you and your husband on the dance floor, get a room. <laughs> it was in Montreal clowning. <laughs> in Montreal clowning. I'm like, come on now. You got to know the bounce, but, but have somebody pray for you. Need somebody to pray for you. Need, need a word. There's, there's balance. I mean, you can call on any time. Bam. That's my role. That's what I do. And they can do that because there is balance. So you can't be all, oh, I want to be kept. I want to make it. I want this. I want that. So I just have to be zoned out and just walking around. Ah, da, 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 da. Come on. That don't impress the enemy. Oh, that, that really is fear. That really is fear. Because if I come out of that and have fun, then I'm going to go back to me. That's you really, I, I can't, I, I'm afraid. I don't trust you to be everything to me, God, in everything. Or then you're the opposite. It don't take all that. I mean, that's cool. I mean, I love God. I got a relationship with God. I know the word. I said, but you know, that's there. And I hear it a lot in my class, but that's your anointing. That's what you're anointed to do. Are you kidding? What are you saying? Boy, I'm going to spend my life trying to change the mindset of people in my class. Everybody in here has a testimony. You are walking testimony. You are walking praise. You are walking prayer. When you walk by somebody, it's prayer. That's who I am. Is you got to get to a point where prayer is who you are. It's not what you do. It's just who you are. So at any time, and there's times you have to speak it. You have to open your mouth. God didn't create the or heaven and earth by just thinking. And he was like, oh, lady, wait, 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 let there be light. That's power. You have to speak power. You have to speak light. Stop saying that. That's why we say our I am so you can hear yourself saying it. But you didn't got so used to it. You didn't got into a routine that it don't have any meaning anymore. I don't care how we slow it down. I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. It didn't just became something you just said. It's just a word. It don't have any meaning. How many zeros does it take to be a millionaire? There's people in here that don't even know that. And I'm not going to call your name. But what I'm saying, I'm a point that you just, I am a millionaire. How, what, how, how, much, how much money does it take to be a millionaire? What are you going to do with millions? What are you going to do with thousands? What are you doing with the $5 you have? Can't wait till I get done so you can go to McDonald's, get some breakfast. Because that's what millionaires do. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, ma'am. No, sir. They're up at 5 a.m. looking at the money they made. They didn't have their little oatmeal and coffee. McDonald's, Burger King, all that stuff, that's for poor people. They done had a little fruit. They done, had, they done made breakfast. They stuff was fresh. They, that's what millionaires do. At least the ones that I know. Just the ones that I know, I've seen, I have seen them shut down, 9 o'clock, hey, chill, priest, and they participate, they give, and that's why they keep getting. But they know at 5 o'clock, they know when the markets open up, they know who to invest in, they studying that thing out. We know who twerking, who working, who we know, all the mess that goes on. We get up, turn on the news, who got shot. We know all that. That's our mentality. And we are just feeding each other that. So somebody's got to break out and feed somebody else. I'm telling you, that's what the Holy Ghost says. There's some times when, hey, I'm praying and I'm interceding, but there's some times like, Linda, your Holy Ghost needs to work for you. It's time for your Holy Ghost 
that you didn't just lay hands and just spit on everybody else. Uh, what, what is it for you? Because I can't give you nothing if I don't have nothing. So some people don't need to pray for nobody because it ain't worked for you. It ain't worked for you. You haven't allowed it to break off for you what you need to be broken. And you just recognize it in me so that the poverty thinking that's on you is now attached to me. And now we both powerful in poverty. Powerful in poverty. Powerful in lack. And if somebody bring a word, and Sister Barlow, y'all, I mean, I still got those envelopes. If somebody come and say, look, let me show you guys how to handle your finances. There's help here. Let me show you how to study the word. Let me show you. Let's take the time out. Let's go through that. Mm -mm, it's a waste because that's too hard. Instead of saying, wait, I don't quite understand it. That's the wisdom that comes with what I don't understand that. You mean I got to start thinking right? I only stop screwing in the house of God because my thinking changed. Because I start believing that you're going to go to hell. Fornication is a sin. I thought it wasn't just a big word the church people said. But when I believed, oh, man, it's, it's for real. And I understand my own life, every time I cracked open my legs, every time I did something outside of God's will, <laughs> There's residue from that. Y'all, that stuff is real. We ain't just saying it because Bishop just wanted to brag about a church full of kept women. No, that stuff will, it, first of all, when you come in here, you bringing that mess with you. Every time somebody come in, you jerking, uh-oh, there go Tyrone. Oh, shoot, he better not come in here. And trust me, this is grace. Let your ex come up in here. You'd be like, come on. <laughs> you couldn't go to no other church. <laughs> They don't even start to 10. You couldn't go over there. You're just going to come up in grace and then going to sit on the front. And Bishop be like, hey, you know what? You're paying attention, young man. You'd be like, come on. <laughs> he paying attention. Now he paying attention. Come on. And hear the altar call. You standing up here. <laughs> don't you move it. Everybody come. Be like, man. Man, now it gets to a point where you're like, dang, I did. I did, I did, Lord. Why didn't somebody tell me? I tried to tell you. Okay, it ain't going to be me up with. I'm going to make sure don't nobody else do that. I'm going to make sure don't nobody else do that. That ain't a good feeling. That's just a reminder. It's not to beat you down. with some reminder? Man, I see, I see what Keith and Lisa got. When that Lisa was circling Keith, I was like, man, man. The blood that's in that girl is in my son. I don't care what his dad don't do. I know the blood, the same blood that's in the Bailey family is in Lisa. I can focus all day on what, it, what Davey's not doing, or I can focus on what his aunt doing. Same blood. Same blood. So I can say, see, Davion, look. You know how crazy your aunt is. Look at her. Look at the example. There's no excuse. I'm not going to let him be defeated by, well, that's, there's just lack in my family. There ain't nobody in my family. That's, again, here we go again, making excuses. I want you to understand, you don't know what it's like. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, where I am today, I don't know of anybody in my family, period, and I hope they listening, period, that have accomplished the things that I've accomplished, and yet I'm like, Oh, man, look at all that I haven't accomplished. I'm so focused on what needs to be done, and they looking at, dang, Linda, you got a good job. Dang, look, I hear it all the time. Look at your boys. Look at what you're doing. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? I'm so far behind. What are you talking about? I'm so far behind. Why is that just glorious? I mean, they just like, man, we just can't touch you. I'm like, man. I'm so far behind. I don't want people to get used to me being here. I don't want to get used to that. I need somebody to be like, hey, where you at? You stagnant. You ain't made no strides today. We coming up on that, uh, that 90 day. We about to twist the end of the year. What did you say you was going to do in 2014? What did you say you was going to do? Did you forget? You took those notes? Pull them out. It's still some time. If nothing else, it's still some time to change your mind. It's still some time to change your mind. I'm not going to go into 2015 beat down like I was in 2014. Nope. I'm not going to do that. 
I'm not even guaranteed that I'm going to make it to 2015. I can't go in there relax. I can't go into coming here. It's another watch night service. I don't have nobody. I was so encouraged when Kenny and Trey got married. I just knew next year was going to be, I just knew it was going to be just a, uh, every year somebody was going to be a surprise and it was going to be me. Wait a minute. You spent all of 2014. You ain't invested in yourself. You still raggedy in your thinking. <laughs> and you just want to be Trey. You just want to set it up. You just want that so bad because, oh, that just looks glorious. Ask Trey how glorious it is being married to Kenny Williams. And I, and they, they got to love for Thank God they kids. I'm like, I see why it's cool to get married young. Because when you older, some stuff, you be like, <laughs> <laughs> but they just, they just bounce off each other. But I, I be trying not to, you know, but as a mom, I'm like, ho, hold on, son. Trey is super sensitive. She, she ain't one of your brothers. He didn't have no sisters. <laughs> she ain't one of the boys. What, what are you doing? Let's, let's take a walk. <laughs> Took one of those walks. <laughs> like your mama did in the store. You just... <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I, look, I had a flashback video. I'm sorry. <laughs> Betty, like, dang, you ain't got to. We get the point. We get the point. <laughs> One of those, well, hey, what, what, what's, what's going on? <laughs> you, you don't want Trey to be a, a, a Trey John Smith because you didn't handle that right. I don't care what your homeboys do. She's not one of the boys. Lighten that up. Well, he had a rough mom. <laughs> so like, okay, hell, lighten that up. You got to know Trey. Dwell with your wife according to knowledge. <laughs> Understand Trey. You, you got to know, know what you got. Trey, like, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad. Just keep your mouth, just keep your face straight. I know my son. I can say that about my son. If Trey was my daughter, I'd say that about Trey. But I know my son. I know what I raised him to be. Uh, chill up on that shutdown. Men shut down. I had an opportunity for 21 years to watch his ins and his outs. I know his highs and his lows. I know he, he could only go for so far. He just couldn't be too funky in my house, but I could tell he had attitude. You know when your kids got attitude. What's wrong with you? Nothing, mom. Mm -hmm. You know, but I just train my kids. To, you, know, you just act like everything okay. <laughs> Everything's fine, mom. <laughs> you getting on my last nerve. Because they know if they show any sign of, <laughs> of unhappiness. Maybe I'm not the parent that you need. Maybe somebody else can do a better job. But hold on now. You, you run in a household. You setting up a legacy. The thing that's going to come in her, out of her womb is going to have your blood in it. You don't want to destroy her. You don't want to be insensitive to her. Because you might have a daughter. You might have a daughter come out of that womb. You want to make sure, okay? And, and, you know, little things happen. You know, they learning each other. <laughs> and Trey is. And, you know, she, it, but I got to give it to my daughter-in-law. That, that girl will take some instructions. I got to give it to her. She, she, she sensitive. And that's why I look at it. I'll be like, Lord, maybe I'm not ready. Because I know how to get funky and stay funky to let you know, you know what, uh, hey. <laughs> that's why I'm single, though. That's something I got to work on. I'm like, don't, don't take that into marriage. Don't go into marriage being single. And married people can tell you, uh, don't go into marriage. I can't go in and marry somebody else being Linda Bailey attached to so-and-so, so-and-so. No, now you Linda so-and-so. And, -so. and you, before you take their last name, understand who, you, who they are. Because that's who you're saying you're becoming. Because you're joining in with that person. So if they evil and honorary and can't handle money, then that's what you're joining in with. So I'm like, you know what, God, thank you for this day that I'm single. Let me just understand me and what I'm bringing. Am I really ready to relinquish that power? Because I'm, I'm Castro over Cuba. But Cuba getting empty, y'all. <laughs> I ain't got no more citizens. <laughs> Everybody's been deported. <laughs> Baby, I'm my last one. What you going to do? God didn't create man to be alone. Linda, who did God create you to be with? 
So you got to understand, I can't be so, and yet I'm strong because I had to. I had to raise, and I'm proud of, of my boys. Don't get me wrong, I'm very proud of Kenny. But I had to understand, you know, man, didn't, you know, the, the, the moon reflects the light of the sun. You got to understand your role now. Are you sure you're ready for that? Are you sure you're ready for that? Are you sure you're ready to say, for somebody to say, no, we're not going there. But I always go there. I have my own money. No, you're not going there. Are you, hey, that's my sidebar. Get in Matthew 7. I'm, uh oh, where my timer at? Matthew 7, 7. We still asking. We're still seeking. We're still thinking. We're still speaking it. Because we're powerful people of God. Amen? Okay, y'all don't sound like that, but y'all are. Y'all powerful. Matthew 7, 7. When I said that, somebody in their mind's like, oh, I know what she's going to. I know that scripture. I know you did, Maylee. Come on, Maylee, that's easy. I know you did, Quayla, that's easy. But I got kids here that don't know Matthew 7, 7. Because they don't pray. And when they do pray, they don't know what it means. They don't know what they're supposed to do. Some people pray, they just, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That's praise. And that's good. That opens the window. We talked about this in Sunday school. It opens up the door, gets God's attention. Don't just come at him. That's rude. Just walk up to somebody, just start asking. Acknowledge me. Hello. How are you? You look beautiful today, Myla. Do you have any food in your purse? There's a process. There's an order. <laughs> There's an order of things. <laughs> Read it, May. Write this down. Prayer is God's appointment. Appointed means for us to receive what we need from him. Prayer is God appointed means for us to receive what we need from him. So when Danielle said, hey, you know what, let's, my, let's, let's pray, but let's fast and come together. She said there's an appointment at 6 o'clock. That's an appointed time for us to get what we need from God. She prayed for a breakthrough. Man, it was awesome. Man, it was awesome. And some women got a breakthrough. Some women said, you know what? I'm amongst my sisters. I can take my mask off. I don't have to be superwoman. I don't have to be all that my husband need me to be. I don't have to be all that my kids need me to be. I can just be helpless and get some help and be encircled by my sisters and get strength. That was powerful. Don't underestimate that being a link to link up with somebody else. You need that. I ain't thinking right. Now, don't go to somebody else that ain't thinking right. But it's like, you know what, Maylee? I know you know what I'm going through. Can you just pray and intercede for me? I don't even have the strength to pray for myself. You know what? I mean, I, man, y'all can't tell me nothing about Evangelist Mozella. And I've been here long enough, been through some things, had some hurts, had some misunderstandings. But I'll be looking for that. I said, okay, I know this one knows what she's talking about. I don't underestimate what people been through. I thank God that he kept Mother Gracie alive. She, she know too much. She's been on the earth too long, for one. Just that alone. Just that alone. I don't know it all. I know that's going to surprise my kids, but I don't know it all. There's some prayers that get answered immediately. So we read Matthew 7. So you got to ask, you got to seek, you got to knock. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep getting, get used to praying. Get used to coming before God. Get used to interceding because there is a time that it'll go to intercessory prayer. And I'm not going to go into that now. I mean, that's, that really is a good class that needs to be taught, the difference between interceding for somebody praying for somebody and tearing with somebody. Uh, when we have souls on the altar, there's, you got to understand, guys, we, just because we mimic, and some of it is not even, you know, your fault, but some, we just mimic. There's not a lot of training. We do need to do some more training on a lot of things, and we definitely need a Holy Ghost explosion. The man of God, he'll set it up when he gets back. But there's some training that needs to go by. We have different motives, and you have to be honest and know you. I, I, had, I used to be that person to just mimic what I see everybody else do, not even understanding what I'm doing. Because it just looks so anointed. It looks so awesome when you see Mozilla go up to somebody and just lay hands on them, and then they just fall out. You'd be like, man, I want to do that. And then you go up to somebody, and they'd be like, what are you doing? 
<laughs> what, what's going on? Well, when Jaquayla pray, it just be like, man, she just be going. She just get that little arm going like that. I'm about to knock. So now you going around praying like that. So just looking retarded. <laughs> you don't know what she doing. You don't been through what she been through. Get an understanding, people. Wisdom. It's out there. Everybody right now can grab some wisdom. God, give me some wisdom. You can get it. God, I need some wisdom. I just need some wisdom, Lord. I don't know what I'm doing. I've just been mimicking. I don't quite understand what's going on. God, reveal it to me. Let me ask the right person the right question. Don't just sit here and be dumb. Know how to pray. Know what it means for you. Get comfortable in your anointing. Bishop mentioned somebody is anointing the chairs, the walls. <laughs> Let's, let's ease up on that. Grease on everything. Come on. You are the anointing. This church has been anointed. And that's what happens when Bishop teach on something and we get excited. It's like, oh, I'm going to do that. And I'll use your circle in every man seven times. Come on. Somebody went home and was like, shoot, he didn't call me. I'm just going to circle my chair. Seven times, now you're dizzy. Don't have, no, don't have any meaning to it. Research it out. Like, what was he meaning? What, what does that mean? Let me understand. It means something different when Keith is doing and when Lisa's doing it for Keith. You're just circling the chair because you want a husband. And if you pray, God says, sit on down. Sit down. You ain't ready. No, you, <laughs> you sit down. Or you a husband just sitting in the chair waiting for somebody to come around, circle him. Find a wife. Get a wife. Get a word. Get a wife. Favor comes from getting a wife. Trust me, I didn't do for Kenny what has been happening to him. That's just favor because he said, I'm going to be <laughs> the head of this household. He don't know what he's doing. He didn't have a dad. He had a crazy mama. He don't know what he's doing. And I thank God for Crystal and KT. They didn't just give him a house, y'all. They, they literally, hand by hand, my baby, he's going to kill me. But, he, you know, this generation, everything, they got checking accounts. Everything's credit card. My baby didn't know how to write a check. He didn't know how to write a check out. He, I never thought to tell him that. I mean, I was writing checks and they had no money, and I didn't want to teach him that. So, I didn't, you know, I didn't teach him everything, y'all. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> you got checks, I'm going to write them. <laughs> Work it out three days later. <laughs> I knew it too. It used to be a time to take three days. <laughs> so I'll figure out God rose up in three days, you know, <laughs> maybe some money to raise up. So I didn't teach him everything. So he didn't have a check. But I mean, he had a checking account. He just swipe, swipe, go on. Don't balance nothing. So Crystal KT's like, look, when you make your house payment, use a check. That way you have a receipt. Well, my baby ordered some checks. He was like, Mom, my checks came. His, Chris on KT had to show him how to write checks. He was like, Mom, why you do a little swiggly line? That's so people don't be adding. KT make the house payment $5,000. You know, just be adding zeros. There's little things that you just take for granted they don't know. But what if I'd have been like, Chris on KT don't know nothing. And here they blessing my son. I didn't even know. He just happened to mention that. He just mentioned it. And I was like... And that wasn't for me to go home. I didn't go home and beat myself down. Dang, I didn't even teach my son how to write a check. All I said, I said, man, what can I do to bless KT and Crystal? Because I didn't even think about that. And now my son is all happy, like, Mom, I wrote a check out for a house payment. <laughs> He's like, I'm a man now. <laughs> Don't get too happy. <laughs> Don't just keep writing. But that's all he used it for. So now somebody had to, you know, teach him and <laughs> And he, you know, Trey would go get her hair done. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, the pimp, you know, she'd be on us, and we had to put this in our budget. And I thank God. What if I didn't like Sister Marlowe? And she's helping my kids with their finances. And thank God, and this is the beauty, and I'm sure you can attest to this, of having young people, because if you helped an older couple with their finances, they, they lying and hiding and, you know, ain't giving you all the money. But Kenny and Trey, you could be like, look, bring me everything. And you, they just bring you, they don't know it's a mess you're supposed to hide. They just bring you their mess. They like, we went to Bonefish every Sunday. <laughs> we didn't know we weren't supposed to do that. 
And now we just got baloney. So the brother, no, you can't go to Bonefish every Sunday. You got to do this. You got to have that. She's like, your money is my money. I'm going to handle your money for you until you get it, until your mind changes. <laughs> until your mind changes. That's in the sanctuary, y'all. That's not out there. I had to stay here for them to benefit from a Crystal and KT and a Sister Barlow. They weren't going to get that. Crystal wasn't going to find Kenny down there at the Honey Dripper Lounge and teach him how to take his car payment. And Kenny couldn't be so prideful as a man, like, well, you can't tell me. I mean, I know that. He's like, oh, okay, I didn't know. That's the beauty of being young. He's like, I didn't know. Well, cool. Now I know. I got this. I, I'm saying that to say it's some adults that need to say, you know what, I didn't know. Again, God, <laughs> I need some wisdom. Who is it? I have some things I didn't know. I didn't understand that. You know what? I, <laughs> it's some help in the sanctuary. It really is help in the sanctuary. Hearing a word. But your mind got to change. Don't be ashamed. Don't just sit here and suffer and be in lack because you don't know. Ask somebody. And if I hadn't have told y'all, they wasn't going to sit up here and be like, you weren't going to hear from KT and Crystal. I had to teach Kenny how to write a check. I shared that. So it ain't like he about to be like, this dumb boy don't even know. He didn't come to me like, I can't believe you ain't taught your son now. He just said, okay, yeah. And they did it proudly, happy. They think nothing of it. I'm like, man, that's the kind of church I go to? Yep. You mean to tell me that's what we got going on at Grace Apostolic? Yep. That's what I want to be a part of. There's no reason for me to be with that. Well, let me see. Let me, let me look at Let me think about my lack. There's no reason for me to lack nothing. What's, who's, who got this? Who, who, who know how to do this? Now, I'm not saying come up here, grab the mic, put all your business out there. Like, who can help me how to wash my butt? So I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm just saying there's some things discreetly. Have wisdom. Once again, God, wisdom. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's real. Because some people, we do stuff for attention. So I'm talking about Kenny Trey now. Everybody going, KT, can you help me? No, come on. I'm just saying, y'all, That's you got to know when to mimic, what to mimic, and know when the Holy Ghost, your Holy Ghost. That's the purpose of when we go to the altar and we're going to go there. God, you know what? Me. It's me standing in need of prayer. I mean, we intercede for everybody. Can this just be one time? I don't want to be out of order, but can this just be one time when you go to the altar, it's about you? Maybe you can't lay hands on a person next to you. I know what you do. You walk the floor, you anointed, and you just touch. And I, I appreciate what Tommy do that. That's an order. That's, that's just, that's, it's consistent. That's an order. I appreciate that. But I know that's what you usually do. You looking around to see who you can pray for. But can this time, can it just be about you? It's like, you know what? God, what you got for me? What am I lacking? Let's give me some wisdom and some knowledge. Amen? Every head bow. Never get to my nose. Every head bow. This this one is a